so our presentation was interrupted due to the internet problem so i'm recording this video for you guys so i'll repeat it again so that uh, you know it is easy for you to grab where we left so we were talking about django django is basically a uh, yet another framework uh, written in python and obviously it's an open source the most important feature is like uh, whenever we develop anything in python or specifically in django so it django provides us a default admin panel whenever you know we write a module we can simply enable the admin panel for that particular module specifically and we don't have to write you know a lot and lot of course for admin panels specifically the second important feature is form handling the way it handles form uh, you can simply you know create forms through the models or you know you can write your custom form with validations and all it's very good so people who are aware of django must be knowing it i mean specifically for the flask people or you know people who are real, you know familiar with other frameworks form handling is very important feature for django uh, you know inbuilt validations are you know in place and you can simply use it template is you know also a very important feature uh, every mo i i believe most of the frameworks provide you know templating engine so their own templating engine i don't i won't go into the depth of this thing the most important feature that we are concerned about is object relational mapping because we are going to integrate mongo database with using a different object relational mapping with django so the main purpose of object relational mapping is to provide an interface for the programmers so that they don't have to deal with the raw sql queries and you can you know simply switch between the databases without rewriting your queries same we will uh, you know try to understand how this object relational mapping work with mongo database today like other frameworks django is also based on mvc which is model view controller whereas the naming convention has been changed little bit here and model is same as we all know model is you know where we write our database query in a layman term view is in jam in, in django view is basically our controller where, where we write all our logics and uh, template is the actual v file which is being rendered in html format on the user's browser so just to uh, give you a proper you know architecture uh, about a django application this basically is you know on top of everything so we have you know modules let's say we have a module app app 2 and app 3 and all the app we have respective models templates and view files and so is with the other applications the whenever whenever a request comes in uh, to the django it is basically you know uh, handled by the urls and then url determines which application to fork and then respective application and their respective views are uh, called and respective templates are being rendered on the browsers so the basic structure is this so we have a setting on top of all the application and then there is a site level url as well as we can specify our app level url also templates are uh, the html or you can say the static part which in which we you know define our variables and those variables dynamically change our view on the browser so usually we define the models uh, in this way like i'll simply show you an example right so we have this application and then in this i have created a sample application demo app you can see simply that you know we have admin.py apps.py models.py test.py and views.py file so whenever we create any application in django we, we we simply get you know 
these many files by default so a general model structure is this you can simply look at this this thing so what we are doing is we are defining our uh, table post and then we have you know these three columns which first is title second is content and you know this date field however this is specifically written for uh, mongo but the similar architecture can be you know seen in general django structure so we have simply defined a table name person and then we have two columns here first name and last name basic form so forms are basically of two types in django the one that we create manually and the second one that is automatically created from the model we have defined in our previous slide the first one is basic form that we are going to trying to define manually and that is class person form and then forms form general stuff so we have two fields here first name and last name and this is the general way that you know we used to define manually and the same i mean the thing is going to happen with the model form with one difference that we are not going to declare our column names it will automatically be picked from uh, our previous model right so to to let this form understand that the uh, that it has it has to create uh, forms from the model we need to declare a class subclass or i should say and in that uh, we will be simply you know uh, adding this person model as the model for this form view is uh, simply uh, a function that we will use to display to our users so let's say if i if we have created this function right so person by first name request and first name so what it does is uh, the default function for django is you know i'll show it to you again so if we have this function look at this structure we have dev and we have function name and then we have a request so request is a variable which is being you know passed to every django view it has some default you know uh, variables that we will use later but for now the general structure for django function is the, this dev first fun person by first name request and then that's it so here we are passing uh, another variable you know this, this first name so when we pass this kind of variable the url structure becomes something like this so let's say if i if i have to search anything by this thing test so once we write something like this it is basically basically treated as the second parameter for for our django view or i should say the first parameter because the first one is the hidden so the first parameter that we are going to pass to our django view is this thing the first name so um similarly uh, it happens like you know person and this is the way we query to our databases person objects find first name equal to first name now the first name is if you have created it through your model forms the first name is the first name column that you have in your database and you know basically we are querying it through the model so we will only be talking about the models here so person objects find this is basically going to find the first result for you where the first name matches the queried queried first name and then once we have found it obviously you can right you know some try catch exception handling stuff here also but you know in general we once we have found it we can simply return and then render to response is a 
uh, is a function that is responsible to render all the variables and uh, along with the HTML files to user's browser. So here the first parameter is the uh, view file that we are going that that is going to uh, handle the the response format and you know we'll we are going to display it on the user's browser and the second parameter is the variables that uh, we are going to pass to this html file right so this was uh, a general i uh, the purpose of this was to simply take you through as to how model and views basically work in general so that you know it is easier for you to understand so i'll take you through a simple html file which is this one so for example look at this function that we have just talked about and then this is the html which is this file and now i'm going to pass this variable post which we have just received through our uh, model query and then we can use those variables like this so for example if I have to loop through the post variable the post in post I mean this is not Python structure but the template convention so I mean, to to get more familiarity with it you might need to have a look at how uh, templates work in Django but I mean it, 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 just to read it simply you can look at it for post in post post title post last update content whatever so you can you can do these things and this is some stuff that we you know we have to pass it request context so you can you can go into more detail about it now we'll talk about uh, the NoSQL database which is the Mongo database and that is the main subject for uh, to today's conversation so initially when we you know previously when we started working on the database database structures we started with the relational database and relational databases are basically the table based database where we store our data in table and column row and column format so now I mean I don't know how many years but maybe three four years back we started using MongoDB very frequently and other databases NoSQL databases as well so the NoSQL database I mean we named it NoSQL database just because it is not structured query language it's not the traditional database it's not the traditional structure we followed in past to store our database uh, scalable high performance obviously open source database query without join so we used to write queries you know so to, so as to uh, uh, um, output the result come by combining two different tables whereas in this thing there is no such normalization stuff that you know we used to follow in our relational databases whereas we can simply uh, there are different different steps I'll take you through most of them you know one by one stores data in document format the uh, most uh, uh, important feature of this thing is that you know uh, it stores your data in document for document format which is basically the JSON or BSON format and that is what makes it very very scalable because we can put our data at a different at different different locations in a clustered format and uh, that's that is one of the most important feature for this and also uh, you don't have to look through each the entire table because your data is stored in document format it is easier uh, to look up for the data and that's how nowadays most of the big data uh, software are you know handling it for example Hadoop or you know anything nested queries you can write nested queries obviously uh, will uh, again uh, take you through that 
so map reduce function for the aggregation for the aggregation we used to have group by you know uh, order by you know different different kind of queries in our sql uh, relational sql databases whereas in uh, in no sql format and specifically in the mongo database we have map reduce functionality which is basically uh, responsible for uh, handling uh, this aggregation kind of thing so to uh, first it maps uh, with the data and then reduce is basically to uh, reduce is basically responsible to you know do all the calculation and stuff and return the results in an appropriate form if you <clears throat> what's document model so document model is basically so let's 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 look at it in a very relational and very traditional way so we used to we have a users table here which is table is you know uh, converted into document contact document and the access document now just to just to uh, talk in a relational manner we have this id here users id and which is used as a foreign key in these two tables look at this structure so this is object id1 object id1 object id1 is the foreign key in these two tables and object id2 object id3 so this is how basically uh, you can look at it it's a purely json format and uh, our data is stored in in pure json format which makes easier for us you know for, for our program to look up for the for a specific data in the in the document so just to just to uh, remind it again tables have been converted into documents here so we have one user document contact document and access document the data structure you can look at it it's simple json format and the other stuffs are same however we can do the same thing in a different way now how how, how does the, the the previous slide were basically to make you familiar as to if as as you know if you are familiar with the relational database this is the way we would use to store our data into different in in three tables whereas the way we store in 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 our mongo database is is this thing so we have uh, let's say one document which is we can let's let's name it as users and we have this id which is the automate auto assigned id you can say primary key <clears throat> and we have this username field contact now look at it now that we are storing our data in a pure json format we can simply store it as as if it was a single object right so we can say this is structure as embedded sub document structure so we have contact and the same thing is we have merged the access document also in this thing so in this case we don't have to use the primary and foreign key relationship which makes us it makes it easier for uh, for us to sim uh, to query uh, you can you know simply think about it so if we have a user id we just have to fetch the contact we don't have to join two tables to fetch the phone number of a particular user we can simply look up for the data in one document how do we query uh, nested so i'll i'll take you to to the example so So I'm gonna create one data and that is So 
Star. Seems I got the data was deleted. <coughs> However, so um, I'll have to create it again. So for this, this is the nested query. Uh, it's db dot user find you know contact phone. So you can look at it the way we are we are querying through querying to uh, users model, users document is you know we are simply trying to find out this contact and then inside that it's phone so the query is also in a simple json format it's readable it's very easy to to grab the you know to understand as to how this query thing is working so the, the same thing is you know we can use for the for the for the email thing also we can simply query for a particular email with this way which makes it very easy to add as well as you know faster to to respond for a particular user and specifically when you are dealing with large databases now i'll i'll simply like a like a initially told about the comparison between the relational database and no sql databases in relational database we used to have tables in Mongo database, we have collections. In this, we used to have records, rows. Records are you know, converted into documents, and rows are objects, JSON objects specifically. Queries used to return record. It returns cursor. We'll we'll look at as to how does that work. <coughs> so now the most important uh, uh, part. That we are going to discuss here is how how do we integrate it with Django we all know that to deal with the database with Django we used to have object relational model that's what we discussed in each in our initial conversation and so is with the case or uh, you know with Mong MongoDB so we unfortunately we have a, a Mongo engine which is you know available you know with open source license and it is written purely in python for mongo database uh, with this orm we are not going to deal with the django's traditional migrations that we used to have because mongo does not require it as well as uh, th this uh, orm also does not provide it it's similar to django orm once we have this thing uh, we can simply let's say I am going to show you with the demo so if you have any virtual environment you can simply pip install mongo engine and it will do all the magic steps for you <coughs> right so with this thing uh, I'll, I'll take you through the code With this, we have already discussed about the basic structure of uh, this Django. We are dealing in Django 1.9 here. The model is uh, and, um, changed a little bit for us. Now here we are sorry. So from Mongo engine import, we are importing everything and then we have blog settings import db name db name is that what we have defined here db name is blog here so we can simply connect and this makes us very flexible about uh, which database has to uh, connect with so let's say if we are dealing with multiple database we can simply we can simply connect it on the fly <laughs> obviously we can have you know we can think about making it more structure but you know this is the rough structure that you know i've just created for the demo purpose so we have this model which is a document type like we have already discussed 
that tables are document here title is a string field string field you can read more about it on the mongo engines uh, documentation site whereas you can simply uh, know more about the kind of uh, fields that it supports we have this date time field so we have defined our basic model right we have uh, collecting things in view so for the view part it is basically this thing from django render to uh, response and these general import stuff we have this index so now what it does is if the request method is post title content we are collecting the data like we used to have you know uh, earlier we discussed why the, this basically simplifies the reason why we are passing this request variable as default as default parameter for any view function so we have this title we have this content i mean this this is a traditional way of, i mean we can we can do it in a much simpler way so this this is how we used to create our data in in this mongo engine right so we can more to simplify it this way also we can simply pass this thing return dot base return now and then we can simply remove these two lines <coughs> and we have saved all saved all variable so get all post from db we we can simply collect all the post people who are already familiar with django they must find some a uh, little bit different uh, syntaxes here but if you are looking at the uh, look and looking at it for the first time you can find it very easy so if we are if we are going to find uh, trying to find out all the posts that we have stored in the database we can simply do that and the output um, let me look if we are running the server yes we have so in this case we have a very basic structure whereas on the index it is you know returning all the tests so let me try to create one So now I have created a new blog, and which is which is you know reflecting here. So it should be clear for you to understand as to how this code is working. And now we have this thing, <coughs> update function. So how it does is. <coughs> Let me open the view file at the same time for you. So this is how we are going to. We have just created this update function here. So once you click on the update button, it will trigger a get variable. Very simple stuff. You can you know simply pass on a URL also if you want to. and then we have here id is equals to eval request request method plus id <coughs> so all simple stuff you can look at this thing here this id stuff
and we 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 have just we are going to find out the 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 post that we are going to update with this structure so post dot objects id equal to id simple stuff zero is just to because it returns uh, objects you know so to find out the first object we are going to append it with the zero index if request method is post post dot title request so i mean this stuff will deal once we post the data lf if the request method is get then template is if dot and then params that we are going to pass and then simple stuff render to stuff template params and you know so this will pass on the parameters to the update template which is a simple update function simple csr token post id post title last update and then this content <coughs> testing again will update and then we can simply <coughs> change it and you can see the changes with that are reflecting here testing again with update So these are very simple, simple stuffs that we have you know, just <clears throat> learned about how we can query to the database using Mongo engine and how we can uh, display our database. You know, so the main stuff is if you are already familiar with Django, you will find it very easy to uh, grab the understanding about uh, uh, Mongo engine and you can simply read the documentations online. There are different ways to connect the database. The first method that we have just now saw was the simple uh, simple mechanism whereas we were defining our connect function in our models just to show you this way connect database whereas we can to, to, sim to simplify it more we can use uh, setting level functionality also whereas we can you know simply pass the mongo user, mongo password, host, name, database host and we can create the host string that would help us connect with the database so it is something like uh, um, right. so this thing <clears throat> so we can use to connect this simple string uh, there are different different uh, ORMs that are responsible to help you know to help you how to connect with the Mongo database but the, the, with the way Mongo engine is working is far better than those other ORMs reason being it is you know open source and being constantly maintained works the structure of this uh, mongo engine is more or less similar to that of uh, django rm so people who are familiar with django will take it you know will understand it very easily a replaceable component in django so it doesn't you know you can simply replace it with the other component or you can you know if you have to simply update the mongo engine orm you can simply do that whereas with the uh, there are other ORMs which comes with the you know installation in Django which makes it difficult if you have to simply work with different ORMs or if you want to update the ORM specifically <clears throat> like I like we just talked about there are other alternatives for the Mongo engine the other one is Django non rail which uh, was previously developed for uh, Django 1.4 or maybe 1.5 but I don't know it's, we have not seen any update on Django Norel github repository for last 3-4 years so probably it's not being updated or maybe they will update it later but right now for, for now it doesn't seem to it doesn't look like a good alternative of Mongo engine or 
for that meter for that matter any other no sql database orm <clears throat> now the question that comes after going through all the discussions is when should when should uh, you know i use starting mongo database if you are starting a project with design freedom like we have uh, recently discussed about uh, normalization so uh, since it allows us to store our data in uh, in a document object model it becomes easier for us to design it you don't have to go through the traditional database uh, books so as to understand the normalization the way you store the way you uh, query your database and all so it's it gives you a complete freedom on that part <clears throat> there is a very specific uh, feature of mongodb that you know it allows you to store uh, geolocation data obviously uh, the, the same feature is now available in mysql and postgresql also but the kind of compatibility mongodb provides with our geolocation data is is far ahead than those open source models you have a high volume traffic so the thing is like if you if you if, if you if your project is more about you know read oriented data read oriented uh, uh, queries mongodb should be the first choice for you and even in in today's scenario if you want to scale up your project mongodb is the uh, should be the first choice for you because the way it allows you to uh, handle database is completely you know design free you are in it provides you very quick search and very quick query functionality because it stores all our data in our document in, in a document format you want auto sharding auto sharding like we discussed because the data is stored in uh, simple document and collections mock format you can simply cluster it very difficult sharding is another you know uh, way to call clustering so clustering becomes very easy that's that that's how that's how today's uh, internet structure and the data structure is moving so it 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 is you know completely uh, it, it becomes completely understandable at this point if we if you are if you are thinking about creating a big application uh, you should be thinking about using mongo database at least once and uh, try to try to make your decision at your own so this is how the the main purpose i'm sure that the time uh, we cannot cover these django itself is a very vast topic and uh, mongo database itself again you know it's a complete new database and uh, to connect with these two uh, using mongo engine itself a very big topic my purpose was to give you a quick go through uh, so uh, that you know you can have at least a way to follow uh, if you want to use mongo database with the django think about it again it's quite quite interesting to work with mongo database and we are you know particularly using it in our lot of projects so uh, thank you thank you for the time I, I i hope you found you got something out of this conversation <clears throat>